This video is brought to you by JLC PCB. More on them later. So when you're soldering, you have probably noticed the smoke rising as the hot iron melts the metal. And you may have guessed that this smoke is not particularly good for you to breathe. And in that case, you'd be right. There already exists several DIY solutions for filter systems that can remove some of the chemical gases, which is very good. But it turns out these are only about 5% effective. Now, in this video, I'm showing you how to make a much, much better filter system that you can still make yourself on the cheap. And I'm going to explain the science behind why it works. So let's begin with a very short and sweet science lecture. I'm basing this explanation on lead-free rosin core solder, which is the most common type used by hobbyists. And the byproducts are mainly two different categories. We have the particulate matter and the chemical gases. The particulate matter is created when particles are so small they become airborne and start drifting in the air around us. The particles start to become airborne at a diameter of 10 micrometers and smaller. And when they get even smaller than 2.5 micrometers, they not only embed deep into your lungs, they can actually enter your bloodstream as well, which is terrible. <laughs> The second category is the chemical gases and you may recognize some of the names shown on screen right now and you may also recognize that this is not really something you would like to breathe. These are produced from the intense heat of the soldering iron interacting with the rosin and the solder flux and this whole mix, the particles and the chemical gases are known as a colophony. Now we'd like to remove as much as possible of this out of the air that we breathe because they can lead to a whole host of problems like cancers or asthma and metal fume fever and various other lung damages. And to do that, we need a twofold attack vector. Luckily, there already exists a lot of different filters that we can repurpose to make our DIY solder fume extractor and the first filter I'm going to use is a HEPA filter. These filters are made of a super dense fiber mat and will capture 99.9% .9 of all particles larger than 0.3 micrometers. And here's a really interesting fact for you. This filter is actually the most efficient at capturing the larger particles as expected, as well as the smaller particles that are less than 0.1 micrometers in diameter. The reason is that these particles are so small, they can easily collide with water droplets and other stuff floating in the air which creates this really random erratic movement. This is called Brownian motion. And it actually increases the likelihood that the particles will come into contact with the filter walls where it gets stuck due to the filter's attraction force. It's the medium sized particles between 0.1 and 0.3 micrometers that are the most difficult to capture because they are so small they can pass through the filter openings but are not so small, they get influenced by other particles in the air, so they can easily flow on the airstream through the filter. Now this is usually solved by having several layers in the filter, and you can also give the filter a static electric charge, which makes it easier to attract the particles. So this is one type of filter that I'm going to use for the particulates, and to combat the chemicals, I'm using activated carbon, which is the filter you're most familiar with in other DIY solutions. This filter may only be about 5% effective at reducing the total volume of the colophony, but that 5% constitute most of the chemical gases and I want to get rid of them anyways. So the way this filter works is you take uh, regular coal, which you can see here, and you treat it with hot and pressurized gases. Now, this creates tons of tiny little pores in the carbon. Now, all of these tiny pores are fantastic at capturing the chemicals as they flow through the filters, where the molecules can get stuck inside of these pores 
in a process known as adsorption with a D. And here's another interesting fact for you. If you take just one gram of activated carbon and you measure the area of all of the pores inside of it, it actually has a total area of about or more than 3000 square meters. So now we understand the dangers of soldering and also how we can get rid of these dangers by using various filter types. The building blocks that I'm going to use for my project is a HEPA filter. This is made for vacuum cleaners and it actually includes a layer of activated carbon. Now I'm going to supplement that with a second layer of activated carbon. This one is made for kitchen hood extractors. This is just to increase the total travel time or the total travel distance for the chemicals through the filter, which in turn will increase the capture rate. To generate the airflow through all of these filters, I'm going to use a couple of regular computer fans. These are eight millimeters and was basically the cheapest way to get a lot of static pressure that will pull the air and the colophony through the filters. I also designed a PCB to control all of this and this one will take a sliding potentiometer to change the speed of the fans. And all of this will fit into a nice looking 3D printed case. So let's get to building. I'm building a pretty simple circuit on a breadboard just to prototype before I design the PCB. The whole circuit will be based around the 80 tiny 85 which will read the potentiometer values and map the values to the speed of the fans. This is going to be a really simple circuit with very few components. So my first test circuit works, which is great. I had already loaded the program onto the microcontroller. So the next step is to going to attach the microcontroller to my FTDI helper and see that I can still change the program and upload code. If that still works, I'm going to start assigning the PCB and send it to manufacturing. Now I have just uploaded the code to the ATtiny85 and everything works smoothly. The whole code is actually just about three lines after I have done the setup and I could really compress it to just one line if I really wanted to, but now it's just a little bit more readable. This begs the question, why didn't I just use a 555 timer instead of throwing a whole microcontroller at the solution, which to be fair is a little bit overkill. By just using an 80 tiny 85 that I already had laying around in my component closet, I could very quickly get exactly the behavior that I want from my circuit instead of tweaking lots of capacitor and resistor values as I would have to do with a 555 timer. So although it may be very much overpowered for the task, to me it was still the easiest and the best solution to just get the results that I wanted so I could move on to the next stage of the complete project. So I have received the PCBs that I ordered in the mail. And the first thing that you might notice is the purple colors of the PCBs. This was just because I wanted to try the new color that JLC PCB has added. And it doesn't really matter for the project because these will be hidden inside the 3D printed body anyways. Now the PCBs are pretty small and are designed to hold a sliding potentiometer on the one side and all components on the other side to make for a pretty tight package inside the 3D printed case. So now that I have researched all of the dangers of solder fumes, I'm going to hold my breath for this last solder job without a proper filtration system. I soldered all components on the back side while the PCB could lay flat before soldering the sliding potentiometer. When the circuit board was finished I uploaded the code and checked that everything still worked and the microcontroller could drive the two fans. Now I could begin modeling the case for the project and I printed a few test pieces to check my dimensions before printing the whole case which took about 8 hours on 0.3 mm layer height. I'm really pleased with how all the building blocks fit together and mounted inside the 3D printed case. 
After mounting the fans with the included screws, the HEPA filter is simply pushed into the case and held in place by friction. The activated carbon filter is designed to be cut, so I made a piece that fit inside the case and printed a filter grill to hold this in place as well. Unfortunately, I didn't leave enough clearance to mount the power jack, but I have fixed this in the published files. Well, so I thought I was finished with the project, but I discovered that I'm actually not finished just yet. Because when I went to test the fan and just see how it could extract all the fumes from the solder, they didn't quite get pulled through the fan or the extractor itself. So now I've done a lot of different testing to see if the fan becomes more efficient when I set it up in different configurations by switching the sequence in which I have the HEPA filter, the computer fan and the coal filters. And I get some improvement, however I don't really get the level that I was looking for. The problem is with the HEPA filter because it is so dense that the air doesn't really get pulled through continuously. Now I have also looked at various other fans to see if I can buy something more powerful. But I have concluded with ordering just two more fans and adding them onto the current assembly. So my plan is to have a total of four fans that will all work in unison to pull as much air as possible through the HEPA filter and the activated charcoal filter. Now this means I'm also going to redesign the 3D printed case and I'm going to have to reprint this. And I'm thinking the most efficient way of mounting the four fans is to have two halves that I can mount together where I sandwich the HEPA filter in between the two sets of the fans. Now, although I really thought I was finished with this project today, it turns out it still has some more work to do. I started by freeing the electronics from my old assembly when the new case design had finished printing. I then installed the first two fans in the bottom case and my new set of fans in the top part of the case. I soldered the new fans onto the same PCB as before and added a barrel jack once more. Then I ran a quick test to check that all four fans worked and pulled the air in the same direction. I had to make a small dent in the bottom case with my soldering iron to make room for the wires for the new fans. This was just a quick fix so I wouldn't have to reprint this part as I forgot to add room when modeling. This let me install the HEPA filter by simply sliding it into place. After inserting the two case halves into each other, they are being held in place with one continuous strip of electrical tape. The final piece is adding the activated carbon filter, which holds itself in place with friction. And now, let's see if it works. There you have it. The fume extractor works perfectly and I can breathe easy knowing it will protect my health for many years to come. Now, this project was sponsored by the fine folks over at JLC PCB, where you can get five custom PCBs manufactured for just $2. Check them out with the link in my video description to thank them for sponsoring this video.